A pleasant good evening to everyone. We want to welcome you once more to our Sunday night live here at Wellington, where, in the words of William Carey, we're always expecting great things from God, and we plan to attempt great things for God. We hope and pray you had a wonderful Sabbath, and you had a wonderful day that truly goodness and mercy followed you, and we have come once more to this platform to be edified, to be educated, to be tutored, to be nurtured in the art of conducting Bible studies. Friends, again, if you're watching on Facebook Live, YouTube, wherever you're watching this broadcast from North America, South America, Central America, Asia, Africa, the islands of the sea, whether you're under a guinea tree or in your house, wherever you are, we say welcome. We hope and pray that this broadcast finds you in the best of health, physically, spiritually, and otherwise. Friends, again, if you have not yet subscribed, remember to please subscribe to our church's channel. Go to YouTube, click that subscription button, get signed up, get others also signed up to this particular channel. There's a lot going on as we go live every Sabbath, Wednesday, Sunday. You'll be notified. Also, while you're in the same space, remember to subscribe to my personal channel. Type my name in Carlton not hit that subscription button. We have a lot in the pipeline planned, series after series. We know you'll be benefited and blessed by these series. And again, friends, if you have not yet signed up, remember to sub um, reach out to us. E if you'd like to receive our study guides, um, the lessons for each particular series, email us at info at wellingtonsd.com or c.not at thefinalmovements.com. We'll do our very best to add you to our mailing list. And friends, to get you subscribed, get you signed up. So as we send out these lessons on a weekly basis, you will be blessed by these lessons. Again, friends, we've been saying it for over two years now that there are two great works that I believe every Seventh-day Adventist must take hold of as we see the end approaching. One, it must be the medical missionary work. And friends, as you do this, we are told nothing will open doors for the truth like the evangelistic medical missionary work. This will find access to the hearts and the minds and will be a means of converting masses to the truth. And so the medical missionary work is very, very important. And I want to encourage you, get hold of it, get signed up, sit under spirit-filled teachers, buy the books, read, learn the remedies, practice on your loved ones, right? Get a firm grip on diseases and their causes. And we're told as religious aggression um, brings forth, it is imperative for God's people to understand disease, its remedies, and they will find a field of work any and everywhere we go. The second thing I think we must be schooled in is the art of public evangelism, especially in the arena of knowing how to give Bible studies. I believe it is a shame, it is a sin for you to be a Seventh-day Adventist in the Adventist church and not know how to conduct a Bible study. And it is possible for you, for you to be a member in the church all your life and not yet conduct a Bible study. Friends, that's not good. We are told every church, whether you're a big church, a little church, you know, every church should be a training school for Christian workers. She says its members ought to be taught how to give Bible readings. And back then, Bible readings were called um, Bible studies, how to teach and to conduct the Sabbath school work. So every church should be a medium. And that is why we have established this platform. And as we meet once per week, friends, we would like to use this platform as a means by whereby you yourself can be taught how to give Bible studies. Now, friends, again, we've said it, that the greatest evangelistic work of all time will take place in the future. It is found in Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 through 5. It is called a loud cry. And when this loud cry goes forth, it will not be an individual work. It will be a holistic work where every member, faithful member, who have survived the shaking, received the early and the latter rain, are now empowered to go forth to, 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 to expound, expostulate upon these doctrines that have made us a distinctive people. Lord, have mercy. That's on philosophical tonight, right? We are told when it takes place, she says, men of faith and prayer will be constrained to go forth with holy zeal, declaring the words which God has given them. The sins of Babylon will be laid open. Then she says, now, the papal power are all unmasked. 
She says, by these solemn warnings, thousands upon thousands will listen who have never heard words, never heard teachings, never heard doctrines like these. And so, friends, I want to encourage you. I want, I beseech you, I, I, I entreat you, I implore you, get involved. Let's not become distracted in regards to what is taking place in the church. Since they will, they, the church will always has problems. And if you allow the problems to side to sidetrack you, you will never get involved in public evangelism, witnessing, giving out tracts, or even trying to conduct Bible study. You know, Emperor Caligula was one of those emperors who died with a very big stain upon his character. And he will, he will always, historians will always remember one particular episode in Emperor Caligula's life. It is said it was... It was always a stigma upon the char character of, of Caligula that he gathered his warriors and fitted out his ships. And when the people of Rome looked for some great addition to the emperor by the vast naval expedition, he simply anchored his vessels near the beach and bade his legions advance upon the shore and gathered seashells and pebbles and carry them home as trophies of their undisputed conquest. He trifled where he, where he should have struggled. He spent time and labor upon matters no importance of no importance and neglected the weightier business of his kingdom. Friends, we don't want to find ourselves gathering seashells. We want to get involved in the Lord's work. And I want to encourage you, friends, God can use you. God will use you. If God used a donkey, if God used a rooster, are you not more than these? God, if you avail yourselves. And I encourage you, friends, you need to get your study guides. Download these lessons. Invest in a binder. Get the PowerPoints. Go back over and watch the videos and ask God to open a platform whereby you can use these lessons. And if you don't use these lessons, then use somebody else's. Use amazing facts. Use it as written. Use it whatever you want to use. Um, but use something, brothers and sisters, to teach the truth for this hour. Now, we have a lot to cover. So we're going to get right into our message. But we want to pray first and ask God's blessing upon this evening study. Let us, let us pray. Loving Father in heaven, we thank you once more, Lord, again for the opportunity whereby we can meet as brethren to discuss and to dissect these doctrines that have made us a unique people. We ask tonight even now for more grace, more power as we look into this subject. These mercies we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, saints, we say welcome once more to all those in the chat group. Look, it's looking very good. We say greetings. Uh, we welcome you. Um, let's get ready to study God's word. We ask you now just to copy this link, share this link with someone who you think will be benefited by this evening's study. Now, where are we now? Friends, the present truth, and as it says, it has been a journey to write these over 40, 45 lessons, friends. It, is, it has been a stretch, but it has been a rich and a rewarding experience. I have learned so much by writing these lessons myself. Now, the present truth is a biblical, yes. Peter says, wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you in remembrance of these, or you know these things, that you'll be established in the what? In the present. What is present truth? It is not a truth, but a series of truths that God has given to us to give to the world. And we believe that these are the same truths that will be heralded during the loud cry. Now, we are on lesson number 31. We're almost finished. This lesson has two parts. We don't want to rush it. It's entitled, America in Bible Prophecy. Does America, oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail? You know, friends, when I hear the Star Spangled Banner, it, it, I get teary-eyed, friends. I'm telling you, friends, it does something to you. This great country that millions line its shore every year to come to, does America play a role in prophecy? Yes, brothers and sisters, it does. And so we're going to examine what role America plays in prophecy. Today, millions are running to America, but in the near future, millions will be running from America. 
but America is outlined in prophecy, and we want to highlight that. Now, let's begin by reading. Now, no, now your study guy says, can can it really be true? Can it really be true? The United States in Bible prophecy? Absolutely. When you think about it, it makes sense that the most powerful and influential nation on earth will play a vital role in the final stunning events of the world's closing history. All right. But even more su but even more surprises await you as the Bible reveals how the leading nation of the world came to exist and why. Please read Revelation 13 verses 11 through 18 before beginning this guide because these eight verses give a prophetic picture of the United States in the days ahead. Oh yes, America is outlined in prophecy, its inception and what role it plays. Now again, friends, all of our lessons has an objective. And what's the objective? It's simply the aim is to show what role the United States of America plays in end time Bible prophecy. Now friends, again, as we cover these lessons, we are repeating and enlarging. Again, who is your audience? Your audience is non seventh day Adventist. So there's a lot of approach we could take as we teach this, but we want to keep in mind you're, you're, you're ministering to people who have never heard this. This is foreign to them. So we want to make it as simple as we can. We're not aiming at trying to be erudite or sophisticated. We want to, like Malcolm X, we want to make it plain. Make it plain, that's all we're aiming at, making it very simple that even the baby can understand and that they can, they know how to adjust themselves as they hear these truths in the last days. Now, question one says now, whom does the leopard beast represent in Revelation 13 verses 1 through 10? Now, friends, we've covered this, that John said he saw a leopard beast and it was a composite beast, right? It had uh, 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 um, the, 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 the um, body of a leopard, Heads of iron, feet of a bear. Now, we're going to read these verses, a few verses, just to identify who this beast is. Now, we would have covered this beast in the lesson uh, mark, uh, mark for Life, right? So, Mark for Death, rather. So, we would have covered these lessons already. Now, Revelation 13 says, Now, and I stood upon the sands of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. Upon, uh, and, uh, sorry, having seven heads and ten horns, upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name blasphemy. Verse 2 says now, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. Right? And the Bible says now, And I saw one of his head as it was wounded until death. And the deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered. Are you with me? After the beast. Look at verse 5 now. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things, blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue for forty and two months. And he opened his mouth, and he blasphemed against God, to blaspheme his name, the tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. Now, friends, we have covered this. And we've said that this beast represents the Roman Catholic Church. Should be system. I need to change that. It says cyber. Should be system, right? Well, let me just... Now you, it won't make a difference on your slide anyway, right? So it's the Roman Catholic Church system. I'll cover it before the PowerPoints are, are um, sent out, right? The Roman Catholic Church system. The, we've covered this extensively, right? The leopard beast represents the Roman Catholic churches. And you can see the two previous lessons. Right? Now, please read now. Note the beast is made up. The beast is made up of the characteristics of the nations that preceded it. Revelation 13, 2. It has the feet of a bear. It carries the same dualistic ideas as Medo-Persia. It has the body of a leopard. Its body is made up, the, made up of the Greek philosophy. It has the ten horns of Rome. It wields the same political power as the empire of Rome. It has the mouth of a lion. It still speaks the religion and philosophy of Babylon that apostatized from God in the beginning. Most Protestants have believed represents the papacy. So we, we, we teach historically that this, the first beast in Revelation 13, the leopard-like beast, represents the Roman Catholic Church system. Now again, remember, we've covered this, so we're going we're, we're to repeat and we're going to enlarge now. Question 2 says now, 
what would eventually happen to the leopard-like beast. In verse 3, John says now, And I saw one of his heads as he was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. Verse 10 says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed by the sword. So the same punishment that the, the Catholic Church system dealt out, it was the same punishment it received. Some call it karma. We say no. Whatever a man sow it, that shall he also reap. So it would fill it now. It, re, it would receive a deadly wound. It would receive a deadly wound. Now let's see when and how the Catholic Church received a deadly wound. We've we covered this already, right? Now, turn up, please read now. The Bible predicted. The Bible predicted that the papacy would lose its world influence and power at the end of the 42 months. This prophecy was fulfilled in 1798 when Napoleon's general Berthier took the Pope captive and the papal power received its deadly wound. For the full details, see Lessons 27A and B. So you can go back and revisit this. Now, this would be fresh in their minds because you'd have covered this already. Now, I'm going to give you three historical sources that are not linked to the Seventh-day Adventist Church that confirm that this happened in 1798. Just three, all right? The first one is the History of France, Volume 2, page 265. Please read now. She says, we're told now, during the French Revolution? During the French Revolution and under orders from the revolutionary French government, General Alexander Berthier issued a proclamation in Rome on February 15, 1798, informing Pope Pius VI and the people of Rome that the Pope should no longer, quote, exercise any function. There it is. This is historical. The Pope, the same time. That's the first reference. Now, here's the second one, B now. Another reference, please read now. This, and this is from Richard Dupa, a brief account of the subdivision of the papal government. Please read now. <clears throat> Richard Dupa, a British writer who was in Rome at the time, says that the Pope was arrested in the Sistine Chapel while he was celebrating the 23rd anniversary of his coronation. I never knew that. I never knew that. I didn't. I didn't know what happened. What What, what was he doing while he was uh, while he was being arrested, right? But it says good to know. Right? Please read now. Citizen Haller, the French commissary general, and Sir Vani, who commanded the French troops in Rome under General Berthier, gratified themselves in a peculiar triumph over this unfortunate. Potentate. Uh, he says now during the during that ceremony. During that ceremony, they both entered the chapel, and Haler announced to the sovereign pontiff on his throne that his reign was at an end. Mm. The poor old man seemed shocked at the abruptness of this unexpected notice, but soon recovered himself with becoming fortitude. The Pope's Swiss guards were dismissed, and the Republican soldiers were installed in their place. That's history. One more reference. This is from God Cares, um, Mervyn Maxwell's book, a good book, he said now. In, see? In spite of the Pope's advanced age and frail health, he was in his 80s, he was hustled off by French soldiers to a string of different addresses in Italy and southern France. He died in prison in the fortress city of Valence on August 29th, 1799. So we believe these historical accounts fulfill the fulfillment of Revelation 13, verse 3, that it, well, one of his head was wounded unto death. Friends, you got to get this. Now, look what happened now. Look what happened as one beast was going down by a wound. Look at how another beast was coming up. This is how now we're going to bring, we're going to segue into America in prophecy. Question three now. Which nation was predicted to arise around the same time the papacy was receiving its deadly wound? Revelation chapter 13 verse 11 says now, John says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. <coughs> Pardon me. He, spake, he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon. So as one is going down, the other is coming up. So what did John saw? John said he saw a lamb-like beast and which many historical scholars say represents the United States of America. So the two-horned beast in Revelation 13, the leopard-like beast, the second beast, sorry, the two-horned beast, the second beast in Revelation 13, we believe historically represents the United States. Now some will say, I don't understand. 
Today, the United States symbol is symbolized by an eagle. Now, this is what you don't want to do. You do not want to use current man-made symbols, yeah, and insert them into Bible prophecy because you're going to get thrown off, right? We know America's symbol is the great eagle, right? Russia is the bear. Jamaica is not the drunker. Jamaica is the doctor bird. But these are symbols that man attached, uninspired man. But in inspiration, the Bible oftentimes attach animals to kingdoms. So don't get confused. We are with the Bible. Now we're going to prove, we're going to prove why do we say that the second beast, the two-horned beast in Revelation 13 verse 11 represents the U.S. Because friends, you know, as they were doing the O.J. Simpson's trial, Johnny Cochran, the, the dream team, as he was making his final arguments, I never forgot what he said. He says, when he tried to put that glove, he says, the glove don't fit. You must acquit. Friends, in this case, the glove, the glove fits. You cannot acquit. This represents America. Now, history says, please read now, at the time. At the time when the papacy, robbed of its strength, was forced to desist from persecution, John beheld a new power coming up to echo the dragon's voice and carry forward the same cruel and blasphemous work. This power, the last that is to wage war against the church and the law of God, is represented by a beast with lamb-like horns. The beast preceding it had risen from the sea, but this came up out of the earth, represented the, representing the peaceful rise of the nation which had symbolized the United States. All right, now look at this, these historical dates now. It's amazing. I'm going to put some dates in the box and look at what was happening in America around the same time that the Roman Catholic Church was going into exile. Note now. The papal captivity mentioned in verse 10 took place in 1798. Now let's back up a few days before that now. And the new power arose in verse 11, was seen emerging at the same time. The United States declared its independence in 1776, right? Voted the Constitution in 1789, adopted the Bill of Rights in 1791 and was clearly recognized as a world power by 1798. Wow. The timing obviously fits America. No other power could possibly qualify. None. No other power. And I'm going to give you a lot more historical facts as we go on. So you want to emphasize the fact that these dates are credible. They are incriminating. The same time the papacy was going down, America was coming up. Emphasize. Now, question four now. Now, which direction did the lamb-like beast emerge from? Look at the text now. Verse 11 says, another beast coming up out of the earth. The earth is important because, notice now, when John saw the leopard-like beast, it came up out of the sea. Revelations 13, 1 through 10. But when John saw the, the, the two-horned beast, it came out of the earth. One out of the sea the other out of the earth. One out of the sea, the other is the earth. We have to focus on this now. Now, note now, please read now. The nation arises. This, this nation, nation arises out of the earth instead of out of the water, as did the other nations mentioned in Daniel and Revelation. We know from Revelation that water symbolizes areas of the world that have a large population. The waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. All right, so emphasize that, that these other nations, a leopard-like beast also, came out of the waters. But this beast came out of the earth. No, please read now. Therefore? Therefore, the earth represents the opposite. Definitely. So if sea represents a populated area, the earth must symbolize something different. Sparse, dry, lack of water. Please read now. It means... It means that this new nation would arise in an area of the world that had been virtually unpopulated before the late 1700s. It could not arise among the crowded and struggling nations of the old world. It had to come up in a sparsely populated continent. Now, you know, we say Christopher Columbus discovered America. Three ships he took, and I never forget this. You know, we, we know we, 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 some shipping came to America, but look what happened now. When he came to America, it is true. 
America was already inhabited, but sparsely, by the Native American Indians. Friends, I don't know where they came from. As a matter of fact, they seem to be almost everywhere, even in Jamaica, the Caribbean islands, even on our coat of arms. Who do you see? You see the Arawak Indians. It says, I would love to know, put it in a chat group, email me. I would love to know where these people actually came from. And I was watching a documentary, right? And it was said that they had over 50 different tribes of Native Americans living in America. They were subdivided. For the life of me, I don't have a clue where these people came from, right? And we know what America did to them, which is unfortunate, very unfortunate. Magic. The Trail of Tears, very unfortunate. You know, and very, very sad. America has some, listen, America has some very dark spots. You know what I'm saying? Still but again, it, it, it's still one, it's still the best country <laughs> living. I'm not going to lie, I'm, I, I take the dark spots any day, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they work with me, right? But again, so this fits the lamb like beast now, right? Now, question six now. Now, five. So five now. Now, list and describe the two noble features of the lamb like beast. Now, again, we're making it very simple, right? Num number one, it had two horns like a lamb. The Bible says that now, right? Revelation 13, 11 says now, and, and behold, another beast coming up out of the earth, it had two horns like a lamb. Now, when we think of a lamb, who comes to our, what comes to our mind? Christ. John 1, 29 says, John says, behold, the lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. When we think of Christ as a lamb, Christ was a refuge. When people came to Jesus, they found safety, they found solace, they found uh, uh, security, they found a, a, a sense of uh, purpose. So America being a lamb, watch it now, it also speaks that America would be a place of refuge, a shelter. In other words, what Christ was to the people in Palestine and, you know, to, 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 uh, in those days, America was to those who were fleeing persecution. It was a place where you could come and find refuge if you came here voluntarily. Hmm. <laughs> Anybody who came here to the slave trade, boy, you had hmm. it very, very, it, it says, I don't know. I, 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 and, and if I try to figure it out, I get upset. I just leave it alone. But the fact of the matter is, John likens America as a lamb. When we think of a lamb, we must think of Christ like principle. A lamb, Christ. A lamb, Christ. You want to you wanna attribute, the, uh, adopt these characteristics to America. Are you with me? Now, please read now. Note the horns. Horns represent kings and kingdoms or governments. Uh -huh. Daniel 7.24 and 8.21. In this case, they represent the United States' two governing principles, civil and religious liberty. These two principles have also been labeled republicanism, a government without a king, and Protestantism, a church without a pope. Other nations since ancient times had taxed people to support a state religion. You know, this is a sidebar. I never knew why, why they don't say why the horns represent a de a democratism. Democracy. Democracy. Why, why republicanism? I don't know. I need to find out, right? Right? And so the two horns symbolize two, the two notable features of American government, right? Very, very important, right? Now, please read now. Most. Most had also oppressed religious dis dis dissidents. Dissidents, yes. But the United States established something entirely new. Uh -huh. Freedom to worship without government interference. There it is. Emphasize that. You can come to America where you can worship God according to the dictates of your own conscience. That is why when the woman in Revelation 12, God gave her two wings. The Bible says the earth helped the woman and swallowed up the flood. God's true church, and we covered that already, found solace, found refuge in America. Why? Because America gave tolerance for you to worship God according to the dictates of your own country. So God needed a place where his true church, the remnant of her seed, could thrive, a little space to breathe and get her strength back together for the, for the final onslaught of the enemy. Very important, right? Please read now. Absence. Absence of crowns signifies a Republican form of government rather than a monarchy. 
Lamb-like horns denote an innocent, young, non-oppressive, peace-loving, and spiritual nation. Mm -hmm. Jesus is referred to as a lamb 28 times in Revelation. As a matter of fact, did you know this is the only time in the Bible hmm. where a lamb is mentioned and it's not linked to Christ in Revelation? The only time a lamb is mentioned, this is, this is profound, and not linked to Jesus is in the book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 11 the lamb like beast that speaks volumes right no other nation no other nation right now here is a prophetic um documentation of what was happening as one nation was going down and the other was coming up please read now the lamb like the lamb like horns indicate youth innocence and gentleness fitly representing the character of the united states when presented to the prophet as coming up in 1798. Remember, it was coming up, not fully grown. So you, remember, you grow up. America didn't have it all together. They were trying to get it together as they were learning, as learning on the job. They were walking and trimming up at the same time. Coming up, growing up, figuring things out, cutting, trimming. Are you with me? They never, because if they had it together, we'd be in trouble. Are you with me? So God gave a refuge to a place where they were trying to figure things out while America, while, while, while God, while the church was getting uh, a refuge. So, like the gentleness, the innocence, these are the ideals. Mm -hmm. But it was difficult to put them into practice. It's it was still difficult. It was very difficult. I can remember when I mean when 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 they came here, the Native Americans were here, and we know over the years, um, they literally they I mean they they kill mm -hmm. these people. Mm -hmm. And stole their land. They, they did. They, I mean, they, they, you know, they, they, they killed them and they, they, they stole their land. I mean, who owned, who, who, who owned Texas? Mm -hmm. Texas was a part of Mexico. How did they get that? Did they sit down and bite? <laughs> no. So, I mean, so we don't want to be naive. Right. There are some dark spots in American history and we don't want to put them under the carpet. But that's not the focus of the study. But if they do come up, speak to them. Speak to them and that, yes, America's hands is stained with blood. It's a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact, brothers and sisters. You can't deny that, right? Can't deny that, right? Please read now. Mm -hmm. Among the Christian exiles who first fled to America and sought an asylum from royal oppression and priestly intolerance were many who determined to establish a government upon the broad foundation of civil and religious liberty. Their views found place in the Declaration of Independence, mm -hmm. which sets forth the great truth that, quote, all men are created equal, end quote, and endowed with the inalienable right to, quote, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All right. And the Constitution guarantees the people? And the Constitution guarantees to the people the right of self-government, uh -huh. providing that representatives elected by the popular vote shall enact and administer the laws. All right. Freedom of religious faith was also granted, every man being permitted to worship God according to the dictates of his conscience. Mm -hmm. Republicanism and Protestantism became the fundamental principles of the nation. Now, get this now. This is powerful. What, you know why America is so great? Why millions flock here? Here's a secret. Please read now. These principles are the secret of its power and prosperity. Mm -hmm. The oppressed and downtrodden throughout Christendom have turned to this land with interest and hope. All right. Millions have sought its shores, and the United States has risen to a place among the most powerful nations of the earth. Friends, every year people go to embassy for visa. I was conducting a crusade in Jamaica, and a young, a young, a young priest said, Pastor Nott, I want you to pray for me. And I guess he thought my prayers had some, you know, some mystical power. I said, what's, what, what's your problem, my, my brother? He said, man, you're going to embassy tomorrow. I'm going to want to get my visa. I said, let's pray right now. And we pray that God will open up the Red Sea, give him favor. And friends, you know that young man went and the young man got his visa. He's passing out them. Let me go. <laughs> yeah, praise God. Because why? America has opportunity. And friends, I say this, the sidebar. It is a shame. It is a crime against humanity to come to America where opportunity is all around us and not make the most of it. Mm. If you have been here 10, 15, 20 years and you have not, it's because you, because you did not want to. Mm. 
It is a land of opportunity, friends. I'm a living testimony. We came to America. My mother came here on the underground route, underground route. Well, I'm telling you, in Mexico, I almost ended up in jail, cut across from New York. <laughs> right. And you, you know, you know, you know what time, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And one of the first, when she got herself straight, one of the first things she did, she filed for her two sons. Mm. Ever, ever grateful. I came to America in 1989. Then they sent me back. They said I was too bad. Mm. I thought I was misunderstood, if you ask me. You were bad. Um, but you know, I've always had the benefit of growing up in Jamaica, and so I, I'm thankful for that. I've never lost my roots. You see me? You know what I'm saying? Mm. But also America. So I've had the privilege of living in both countries, back and forth, back and forth. But I can tell you, friends, I, I am forever grateful for God's providential leading mm -hmm. in allowing me to come to America at an early age. I have blossomed. I have learned the knowledge I have gathered in, in, in regards to the Adventist history was from America. I have, I have met some wonderful preachers of God who imparted in my life, and I am forever grateful. I'm an anti-America. That's not me. Yeah, I'm anti-sin. I am forever mm -hmm. grateful for this country and I pray everyone who goes to embassy, Lord, release right now the visa. Amen. Lord, just grant them favor where they're coming from. Amen. And when they come here, they will, they, they, will, they, they will be able to gather all they can and make a massive U-turn back to their country. Because sooner very soon, Dragon Brett is going to speak. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But I thank God, I thank God, and I thank God every day. Right? So, two horns like a land. Now, the second thing we'll notice about, about America now, there's, there's going to be a drastic change. The Bible says in the same breath, in the same mouth, one side is like a, a lamb. The other side now, it's going to speak like a dragon. And mm. Lord have mercy. When, when, when this country speaks like a dragon, mm. you think that the, the trail of tears was bad? Mm. You haven't seen nothing yet. Right? Now, bear in mind, you don't want to scare your, 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 your student because he, may, he or she may, be, he may just got a visa. You know what I'm saying? But... You want to emphasize the fact that America will speak like a dragon. The Bible says, here it is now, and a lot of verse, and that same two-horned beast, and he spake like a dragon. Mm. Now, if America speaks like a dragon, he will speak like Satan. He will act like Satan. He will take on his a metamorphosis like a cocoon in a butterfly what is taking place in Americans' democracy. And friends, we're seeing it, friends. Let me tell you something. This election is going to be a very hot one. Yeah, it may be the very last election. Now, I'm no prophet, and I'm no, I'm no prophet's son, but I'm, I can read the handwriting on the wall. Hmm. Changes are happening in America. Laws are being passed, and you can see it. You can see it. You can see it right now. Please read now. Speaking as a dragon. Speaking as a dragon means the United States, under the influence of Satan, will in the end time force people to worship contrary to conscience mm. or be punished. The speaking of the nation is the action of its legislative and judicial authorities, liberty of conscience and the right of individual responsibility, and imprisonment, exile, and death followed for all who opposed their dictates. So soon or very soon, laws are going to be passed that will restrict the religious movements of the people of God in America. And I want to say this. I'm talking to Adventists. To all those who live here, gather up all you can. Because sooner or very soon, you're going to have to flee. Now, you, you, you may have to flee in the country, but you're going to have to flee, right? Because time is almost finished right now. Number six, now, now, what specifically will the United States do that will cause it to speak as a drug? And I want to emphasize a few verses now that highlights the fact that America will speak like a dragon, Right? Revelation 13 verse 2 says now, and he exercised all the power of the first beast. Please read now. The United States will become a persecuting power that will force people to go against their conscience, as did papal Rome, which is portrayed in the first half of Revelation chapter 13. So it will act just like the Roman Catholic Church. And we've covered that lesson. Go back and read the little, the little horn, right? How the millions were martyred. America will one day turn on its own if you don't go along with the system. And friends, we are here in the rumblings. We're here in the rumblings, right? B now. Revelation 13, 12 says now, And cause the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So America is going to force people to pay homage to the leopard-like beast 
which is the Roman Catholic Church system. It's right in the text. No, please read. The United States will lead. The United States will lead the nations of the world in forcing allegiance to the papal antichrist. The issue is always worship. Who will you worship and obey? Will it be Christ, your creator and redeemer, or the Antichrist? Now, bear in mind, America is already patronized by many, many nations, not to mention Jamaica. Lord have mercy. Who far in mind like Jamaica? Mm. Who is far in mind like Jamaica? You know what I'm saying? And so what is happening now, that people are, are, are pan panting after America. Whatever America do, by and by, other nations will follow. Right? Please read now. Note, every soul on earth will... Every soul on earth will finally worship one or the other. Satan's approach will appear to be deeply spiritual, and incredible miracles will be seen in Revelation 13, 13, and 14, which will deceive billions. Mm. Those who refuse to join this movement will be considered divisive, stubborn, radical, and unpatriotic. Mm. Jesus labeled Protestant America of the end time as, quote, false prophet, Revelation 19, 20 and 2010, because it will appear spiritual and trustworthy, but instead will be satanic in its conduct. All this may seem impossible, but Jesus's words are always reliable and true. Titus 1, 2. He foretold the rise and fall of the four world empires and the Antichrist, Daniel chapters 2 and 7, at a time when such predictions seemed outlandish and incredible, mm. but all came to pass precisely as predicted. His warning to us today regarding prophecy is, I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you, you may believe. believe. Friends, as surely as you're born, this will take place in America. See now saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound by a sword and did live. Note the United States. The United States will make an image to the beast by legislating religious practice. It will pass laws requiring worship and force people to either obey them or face death. All right, this is serious, friends, right? This action is a copy or image of the church-state form of government the papacy ruled with at the height of her power during the Middle Ages, when millions were slain for their faith. Mm. The United States will combine civil government and apostate Protestantism in a marriage that will support the papacy. It will then influence all the nations of the world to follow her example. Thus, the papacy will gain worldwide support. Remember the Bible says it received a deadly wound in 1798, but the wound will be healed. And America will play a critical role in healing the wound. And we're going to cover that in part two of this lesson. Go ahead. I have a question. Do you think, um, as we're learning this, the thing that comes to my mind is that look at America as the supreme, the religion of our Supreme Court justices. I think about seven of them yeah. are Catholics. Yeah, more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're going to um, cover that. Yeah, first time in history. Listen, in, and I don't want to jump the gun, but in, in listen, they never had any. America right. was un-Catholic. They were anti-Catholic, pardon me, in its inception. But we have seen that the Catholicism has become more um, acceptable. Hmm. And, you know, Pope Francis did a number on us, man. That brother did an abracadabra. Man, he, he, he charmed the whole entire world, even America. And we're seeing that uh, the, the Catholic Church, and I'm going to show you in, next, in part two, the dates that um, we see that Rome has making in Rome, but definitely so. We're seeing that, we've seen that draft. Now think about it. The first time in history where the, the highest court in America that makes laws, mm -hmm. the vast majority of these judges are devoted, patriotic Roman Catholics. As a matter of fact, there were great rumblings when JFK became president. Hmm. They thought, man, people were like, what's going on here? A Catholic president? Mm -hmm. No sorry, Bob. Not going to happen. Right? And then he was assassinated. Some don't know if, it was, if that was the reason why or whatever. It was it the mob or, or, or Russia. Who knows? But my point is, brothers and sisters, we are seeing that Catholicism is gaining ground. Hmm. The stigma has been wiped off her and she has presented herself now as our friend. Mm -hmm. Do you know what Ellen, what the servant of the Lord calls the Catholic Church? 
she calls the church Satan's right hand man. Mm. That's strong words. Yes, America hasn't changed. But, I mean, Rome never changes. That's why John says he's a leopard like beast. And Jeremiah says, Can a leopard change his spot? Mm. Did you open his skin? No. Michael Jackson tried. Vibes Cartel tried. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> After all, that those cream and rub on can only last so long, you're going to resort back to your right color. That's when true. Michael Jackson died, as white as he looked, on his death certificate was written black. Mm. You can't change. They're not going to change. Are you with me, right? So, but we're going to cover this more in part two, right? Now, the Bible says now, right? It says now, D now, and cause as many that would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Friends, a death decree is coming. Death decree is coming, right? Is coming, right? Please read our note now. The United States. The United States, as head of its international movement, will next influence the nations of the world to impose a death sentence upon all who refuse to worship the beast or his image. So we're told nations of the world will follow her example. She leads out. But by and by, it will, you know, it will spread like cancer. It will spread like cancer, right? And that's why, friends, we are told, you know, God's people, we, she says, as the Lord says, I see the, ne I see the necessity of making haste to get all things ready for the coming crisis. Friends. You know, and, and in, your, in your walk with God, he will tell you where to go. Mm -hmm. and, and you need to, you need to be about your, your business, right? Very important, right? Now, as we wind down, another name? Another name for this worldwide coalition is Babylon the ah, Great. All right. This worldwide, worldwide alliance will, in the name of Christ, substitute the policeman's power for the Holy Spirit's gentle persuasion, mm. and it will force worship. The true church, just before Jesus returns, will again have the gift of prophecy because it keeps the law of God by faith in Christ. All right. Just before Christ's return... His people will again be obeying his moral law through his empowering grace. Mm -hmm. We have learned that the gift of prophecy is available to the church until the end of time. Now watch it now. God's faithful people are called law-abiding people. Yet America will like, liken them as law-breaking people. Mm. Right? Very important, right? Please read these warning. The warning. The warning against false prophets in the last days serves notice that the true exists. The counsel to test all who claim to have this gift would be totally irrelevant if there were to be no true prophet or prophets. Exactly. So as the people of God, we're keeping God's law, but yet we'll be, we will be labeled and likened and stigmatized as breaking the law. What law? A man-made law. And we're going to qualify that more in the few lessons. So again, as I said, many are now running to America. And yes, you, you can run now, but very, very soon we're going to have to run from America. Right? Now, as we wind down, because again, we don't want to overbore them. We want to do it in two parts, make it digestible. Number seven says, now, America will eventually force everyone to receive what? Now, we've covered this already. Right? Number 13, 15 says, now, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in his forehand in his right hand or in the forehead. And we call what, what the mark of the beast is. The mark of the beast now will be Sunday legislated. Go back in the previous lesson, right? This will happen in, in America now. Please, please read now. Note the final. The final points of contention will be worshiping and obeying the beast and receiving his mark. Honoring Sunday as a false holy day versus worshiping and obeying Christ and receiving his mark by honoring the holy seventh day Sabbath. When the issues become clear and people are forced to break the Sabbath or be killed, those who then choose Sunday will be, in essence, worshiping the beast. All right, that's coming, right? They will. They will have chosen to obey the word of a creature, a man, instead of the word of their creator, Jesus Christ. Here is the papacy's own statement. The church... The Roman Catholic Church changed Sabbath to Sunday, and all the world bows down and worships upon that day in silence obedience to the mandates of the Catholic Church. There it is, friends. America is going to bridge the gap. And so as we close now, you want to ask the question, note, are you willing to worship and obey Jesus even if it means to be ridiculed, persecution, and finally, a death sentence? And we hope, brothers and sisters, that you're 
student would say yes. To be continued, again, um, we couldn't cover this in one segment because it's, it's a very pretty long lesson and we want to do justice to it. So we're going to do it in two parts. But again, friends, the objective was just to lay a biblical foundation that America's role in prophecy is fixed. It was predicted years ago by John the Revelator. And we're seeing it come to pass. Again, this is not to scare people. Perfect love casts out all fear, but it's to show you where we are in the history of the world and what, how America plays a role in the final end time events that will usher in Christ's second coming. And again, as I said, many currently are, are, are fleeing to America, but sooner or soon, we're going to have to flee from America. And many have left. And, and we bid them, we do bid them God's speed, all right? So friends, I hope you were blessed by this evening study. Again, very, very simple to the point. Again, who's your audience? Again, we don't want to make it too technical, too much. You're dealing with non-Seventh-day Adventists. And trust me, you probably won't get through this lesson in one session. A lot of questions, but I want to encourage you, outside of this, read other books Read other point of views on America's inception. So as you present this, whatever questions are thrown at you, you can handle them. If they ask a question which you don't know, just simply say, give me some time. Next week when we return, I will have an answer. Or you may say, that which you've asked will be covered in part two. It's a wonderful lesson to, to know. A lot of people don't see America in prophecy. I mean, they see Russia. They see China, the evangelicals, but only we as a church, only the Adventist church, really. Um, and it, and, it, and thanks, to, thanks to John Andrews, John Nevis Andrews, right, of whom we name Andrews University and Andrews Hospital in Jamaica, right, down there off of the Hope Road, Hope Road or, or um, Constant Spring Road, in, in that area, right. It was John Nevis Andrews who was the first in American history history, church history, to identify America as the two-horned beast. And let me tell you something. He just stumbled on it by reading a comic book. This man had to really go through history. See, it's easy now. We can cut and paste and just gather information. They didn't have no, he didn't have no YouTube. Who was going to ask? Ask who? He's the pioneer. He had to read and, no wonder why he died so young. Man, this guy, they, they, they overworked themselves. And he was able historically to weigh the documents and the documentations. And finally, he says, yo, this is America. It was a revolution in the church. And we thank Jane, John Andrews for that wonderful discovery. And we are the only one out there, I'm telling you, because I've surveyed the landscape. We are the only church that identifies the two-horned beast, Revelation 13, verses 11 onward to America, and by the way, let me say this, we're the only one in, 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 in church history that identifies the leopard-like beast as the Catholic Church. So friends, we are on a limb by our own. I wonder why they think we're strange and they think that we're weird, right? But we thank God for our pioneers. All right, saints? Hope you were blessed by tonight's lesson. Um, we're going to have a word of prayer and then bid you good night. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you, O God for these wonderful revelations. Oh Lord, these truths that we take for granted where, where millions are dying to learn of. I pray for everyone online tonight that they would go back home and study these lessons. And so Lord, that you will equip them so as they encounter the other sheep, those who are honest and sincere, they'll be able to expound upon America in prophecy and what we must do to be saved in these last days. Lord, give us all a good night's rest, sweet dreams, we enter a new week. We want strength to take on challenges and obstacles that will confront us, Lord. Give us a victorious week, we pray, and bring us here back at the appointed time. These mercies we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, saints, we bid you good night. We big up everyone in the chat group. Big up yourself. Take care of yourself. Um, may God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And as of always, we say, saints, behold, the eye forward. <laughs>